please welcome to the stage Gregor Rocky and Shailene Woodley. So, uh, Greg, um, you know, you're a filmmaker who's been making movies for a while, and so... Wait, we're in a store, right? <laughs> you're, you are in a store, but you also have an audience, and there's a camera and all kinds of stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, sort of the, the kinds of films you made before versus this one, just to kind of set the stage here, because, uh, you know, there are some filmmakers who only work in kind of like one tone. They're, you know, they make comedies or dramas. You've kind of gone back and forth. But with this one, it feels like you're sort of doing something a little bit different. So can you kind of tell us how you got to the point where you wanted to do this particular movie? Uh, I guess I got old. <laughs> I mean, there's def- I, I'm really um, proud of the... I think I've made uh, 12 movies, 11 movies. I kind of lost count. But the, uh, my movies have sort of been this journey, and they're all very different from each other. And they all... I sort of pride myself on the idea that my movies have been a little unpredictable. Like people kind of don't know what to expect, and it's one of the my sort of pet peeves about some auteurs or some directors, where they kind of make the same movie over and over. And I've never really wanted to repeat myself. And this movie in particular was really, um, it was just like very, a really special kind of passion project for me. I loved the book by Laura Kosinski so much, and it was I just found the story so beautiful and so haunting, and and. Of all my movies, it's definitely the most, I guess, I don't want to say mainstream, but it, it has an accessibility to it, I think, that is different than, say, some of my earlier movies like Doom Generation, which are very kind of punk rock and kind of in your face. The tone of this movie, as you can tell from the trailer, is, is, is definitely more classical, more measured, and I was really going for something quite a bit different, I think, than uh, my last couple movies which as a filmmaker was a really exciting challenge for me. So Shailene, what was your relationship to Greg's movies before you got involved with this one? Um, so my manager is friends with Greg, and a few years ago after we did The Descendants, he was like, there's a director that you should meet because I think you would really enjoy his work, watch some of his films and you know see what you think. And So I randomly went through his films and picked Mysterious Skin to Watch and had no idea what it was about or what I was getting myself into when I started watching it and was so affected by it. It was one of those movies that stayed with me for days and days and then weeks and weeks and eventually months and... I was moved by the performances and the cinematography, I remember just being um, so different than a lot of films I had seen before and the tone of the film. And so then Greg and I met, and since I've seen his other films as well, but Greg and I met specifically after I had seen Mysterious Skin because I was so moved by it. Greg, do you think that's a good access point for your work? Uh, Mr. Skin, I'm. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I, I never can answer questions like that because to me that's always about the individual and critics. You know, like to pick whatever one they like. I think that I've made different movies and I find they sort of attract different demographics. So um, yeah, I mean, it just depends on the person. I think. I also remember I went to I was at Sundance when Kaboom uh, was playing and I was in the audience the night that you guys did your Q and A. And I just, when you guys, when you were answering your questions and the other actors were answering questions about what it was like to work with you, I remember being in the back being like, one day I gotta work with that guy. <laughs> I'm gonna track him down. So it's interesting because just, you know, in the past year you were in another movie that you might term a, a coming of age drama, but it's very different. So can what, what is it that's sort of distinctive about the journey in this film, just so that people don't, you know, kind of accidentally lump them into the same category? They're very different. <laughs> um, the one thing that I love about this film is that it is a coming-of-age film that that talks about and that deals with um, the sexuality component of being a, a teenager and being and, and figuring out who you are. In which a lot of coming-of-age films, I think, based on ratings and based on certain demographics that they're aiming for, sort of leave that out in their in their films and and their formulas. And in this one, Greg was all of your films really you don't shy away from from sexuality and it's really grounded and it's really truthful and it's something we can all relate to because it's something we all know and uh, i thought that that was really neat yeah why don't you talk a little bit about that because it, it manifests in different kinds of ways i mean you talk about your film doom generation which is very sort of in your face to some extent and, and in this movie it seems like there's a lot more that's sort of implied although you know not everything is implied certain things are shown but 
It's interesting because um, this film, I mean, I thought that Laura's book is very much a, about this young woman's sort of sexual awakening just as her mother disappears and the sort of beautiful metaphor of the mother disappearing and this woman being kind of, in a way, born. And so that was something that really attracted me to the, to make the movie. And um, it was, you know, Laura's kind of feminist voice about it. And so it was a di definitely a different take, I think, on sexuality than some of my other movies. Um, I was talking to Shay about it um, when I was just in France for the Deauville Film Festival. And when we were at Sundance with this movie, because there's a, there's a small amount of nudity, but the sexuality is very discreet and very tasteful and, as Shay says, very honest and natural, there's a huge uproar about, oh, my God, there's so much sex, there's so much nudity, what's going on? And when I was in France, literally the first question at the press conference is, why is there no sex in this movie? <laughs> and, and to me, that was really the difference between you know, American puritanism and European coolness, you know? <laughs> in the sense that it's, you know, there's, the sexuality in this movie is definitely very different than um, something like Doom Generation, which was intentionally much more punk rock and much more kind of button pushing. I mean, that was kind of that movie's... Um, it was that movie's vibe but to be very sort of angry and kind of out there. Well, and, and Shailene, your character is sort of angry and out there in certain ways. I think it's a, the movie does sort of chart this path for her sort of coming out of her shell and exploring different aspects of, of her family life and so forth over the course of the, the story. So what was your entry points for sort of understanding the journey that she goes, for, goes through? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. It's always so hard to answer those questions, I guess, because um, I feel like so, m really as an actor, like it's it's all in the script. It's with your talks with the director and then sort of what unfolds between the moments, but the moments between you and another actor. I feel like we just professionally listen and react based on what they're doing or saying. Um, but the thing with Kat that I found so so neat is you know, she had this false bravado and this false courage and confidence because she didn't really have parents growing up who were emotionally available for her. So she had to become her own parent in a way in order to just survive. And then as she gets older and starts resenting her parents more and more uh, in her efforts to escape the pattern of life that they, that they live, she sort of slowly becomes them and you start to see bits of her mother and her reactions to things and bits of her father and her reactions to things. And uh, I think that that's something that a lot of us do. You sort of pretend like things don't exist and you shuffle them under and you, you be somebody else, but those things will always reemerge if, if you don't deal with them. And Greg, for you, I mean, when you're taking this book, which is rich with the themes that she's outlining, I mean, is, is it hard to kind of sort of make it your own thing? Or do you feel like you're sort of beholden to somebody else's vision? Or, do, or is there a way for you to sort of break beyond that? Um, this is my second book adaptation um, after Mysterious Skin in 2004, um, which is by Scott Heim. Um, but so I was confident that I could do a book adaptation. The thing, the trick to me is really finding a, an author and a, a voice, because I get sent a lot of books and scripts and stuff. And it's really about finding... Um, source material that I feel a real sort of kinship with, that our voices are sort of harmonious. I mean, I don't think I could do, um, you know, a book that was completely like so not within my wheelhouse. And this book was, for me, just the perfect blend of being in my wheelhouse, but being out of my wheelhouse. So I, I just realized today in the course of doing all the press and all the interviews I did today that this is the first, um, movie I've ever made that comes from a strictly female point of view. Like, I've had female protagonists before in, say, Smiley Face and Doom Generation and a few of my movies, and I've always been very influenced by feminism. But this book is so from a woman writer who is a woman, deals with women's issues, and it raises so many things about being a woman, being a young woman in society, sort of growing up, being an older woman in this society, and sort of being and sort of trapped by the sort of patriarchal system of what a, what a wife and what a mother is. And just the relationships between mothers and daughters, and just so many um, themes and ideas that as a man you don't really think about and I think for me as a filmmaker that was really super exciting and challenging. 
So we have a couple of clips here, and we can get more into these details after we watch a few of those. So why don't we roll the first one, and then we'll talk some more. So I guess we get the first sort of hints of the, the many levels of communication going on here, although once people see the movie, more and more reveals itself as you go along. So what was the challenge involved there of sort of, you know, keep sort of staying one step ahead of your audience so that they didn't completely figure out the whole equation without spoiling anything. Without spoil, no, it, The movie is really about layers and it's about secrets and it's funny, Shay's character at one point says about her father and her boyfriend that she, what she loves about them is that they're all surface. There's nothing beneath the surface, you know. When in fact... Yeah, you scratch and there's just more surface, you know. When in fact, that's the exact opposite. Um, the whole movie is about false surfaces and what really lies un- beneath them. And so, um, with the actors, it was really, um, it was really exciting and really fun to talk about their characters and how much of that surface, how much of the inside is to show. You know, and it was and it was something that I talked to with several of the actors. Uh, I don't know if we talked about it. I know Shay and Shai, Shay and or Shiloh and uh, Chris talked about it a lot in terms of how much, you know, how much of the secret life of these characters is going to come to the surface. And it was, um, and as a director, it's great because you get to play with that. You know, it's like that's a little too much, or you know, like, or that's not enough. And um, it's really, uh, it's really. As a director, working with actors, this is one of the most um, fun and amazing movies I've ever gotten to work on, just because there's so many shadings of it, and the performances are so incredible, and the actors were so amazing that it was just like, every day was coming, like just coming to set and just being completely kind of blown away. Shailene, what was surprising to you about sort of, I mean, it's one thing to read the script, but to actually go through the process of, of sitting there and being in this you know, world that Greg has created with so many layers to it. It was amazing. I mean, the, the way that Greg formulates his screenplays is, is so poetic. Like when I was reading the script, I sort of felt like I knew somehow how it was going to look because you write so poetic I mean poetic is the word to use it's it's so beautiful to watch and it, it's haunting and chilling and I mean it's sort of it's a coming of age thriller mystery-esque kind of a movie and when you're reading the script you just you keep turning the page so for me like the layers unfolded sometimes even after we finished a scene like you would do a scene and and then the next day realize something about that scene that I hadn't realized before and and getting the chance to work with Ava and Chris Maloney Ava Green and Chris Maloney was absolutely remarkable because both of them were playing characters that we've never seen them in, in those shoes before. And the first day I worked with Chris Maloney, he's walking, we're walking to this car and you're used to see him, seeing him sort of like, you know, as this really masculine, dominant man and you see him walking and his body language was so different than, uh, than anything I expected to see and it hit me so hard. And it was, it was inspiring to work with people who made a strong character choice, committed to that character choice, and then explored all the different colors within. All right, within so why don't we look at another clip? So those of us who have been watching you in movies the last few years, this isn't the first time we've seen you play a sort of disgruntled teenager of sorts, but uh, clearly it's, it's different from some of the, those other roles. But... You know, everybody goes through this in different kinds of ways. So, do you draw it all from real experience when you have to do a scene from that, or is it just are you completely in the zone, sort of just being that character? Yeah, I think it's more about just committing to that character. Obviously, there's parts of me in Cat; otherwise, I, I wouldn't be able to feel um, empathetic towards her situations. But uh, I guess that's the the most fun thing about what what we get to do is we get to jump into some shoes that we've never filled before and then and then leave them behind. Well, Greg, I want to ask you about tone because it's an interesting thing with this movie. I mean, you sort of approach melodrama drama to some degree, but it's also it seems like you're sort of playing with it. So, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it's really it, the the film, as I said, for me as a director was so amazing and exciting to work on because there were those issues of tone and stylization and we were sort of going for this movie I told my DP <laughs> to, I wanted it to be sort of a mix of like Wong Kar Wai and Douglas Sirk you know what I mean like I wanted it to have that 
that, and also a little bit of David Lynch too, <laughs> a little bit of that kind of surreal quality to the whole uh, film, which was to me very much a, a, a in the book. And it's like the book had this very sort of like, it was written in this very stylized, very kind of beautiful, poetic way that did, and it had a lot of dream imagery in it, but it was all very dreamy and just very kind of this beautiful, beautiful piece. And so it aesthetically all kind of worked. And with Ava Green, um, her character to me was uh, such a fascinating character in the sense I didn't want her to be this sort of one dimensional, like the evil mom character. I really saw her as this sort of tragic figure. And Ava and I talked a lot about where she came from. And um, we talked a lot about the idea that if doing the math on her character, her character was born in 1946, which means she was sort of growing up as a young girl, a young woman in like the 50s, the 60s, and who her role models were, you know, Jackie O and, you know, Elizabeth Taylor, you know, the Hitchcock women, you know, those those sort of icons of like that perfect woman, you know, the, like she's always perfect, like perfect hair, perfect makeup, like just so poised. And, and this sort of, unattainable, impossible perfection, basically. And the and so, um, and Ava, when we made the movie, she was only 32, which was, I believe, like 12 years older than Shay. And and um, we had the choice when we were casting that part of going with an actress who was older, and because in the film she ages from sort of 30s to early 30s to early 40s. And so we had the, we had the choice of going with the, an older actress and making her younger or vice versa. And my makeup people actually said it's actually easier to age somebody than it is to take them backwards. And um, as maybe some people know. <laughs> um, and with Ava, it was, but we were, Ava and I both were really wary because I don't, I hate like old age makeup. I like think it looks always so cheesy and it always knocks you out of the movie and going, what is, what is this? What? And so for Ava's, for the Eve character when she's older as in this scene, um, it, it was literally just the slightest bit of like darkening shadows and bringing out, really bringing out the, what age was in her face. But Ava Green, I don't know if any of you have ever seen her in person, is literally the most stunning, gorgeous movie star you've ever seen. And um, she, it was really a testament to her talent that she l literally transformed into this other person. And when she showed up on set in that sweater and her just her body language and her voice and the way she carried herself, it was just like kind of startling because that is absolutely not what Ava Green is like in any way. And it was such an amazing performance. And um, in the scene in the movie later on when she had sort of has this breakdown is, is it has this level of sort of, as you say, kind of theatricality to it and melodrama. But to me, it sort of really fit in her world because she's living this kind of, you know, it, it reminded me so much of like, Elizabeth Taylor and like Virginia Woolf or something. I mean, she's living this kind of life. Of, she sees herself. As yeah, a uh, it's like that's her. She grew up with all these images, you know, and that it, that's literally who she's sort of become. Which, to me, was. I mean, I just couldn't get. I mean, I just loved watching it. All right, so let's take a look at another clip. All right, so let's talk about the makeout montage. Must we were just talking. Day. It was so funny. Like Shiloh would come in, and his on the call sheet, he'd be like, "Make out scene with Shay. Make out scene with Shay. Make out scene with Shay." Okay, see you later, Shiloh. <laughs> Have a great day. Cross it off one after <laughs> the other. <laughs> so you just come in, make out with Shay, and then go home. And of course, that's Depeche Mode on the soundtrack. So it's interesting because we get here. You see sort of the the livelier elements of the movie. So it's it's almost like you know, you can't you can't go too long in this film before like you know things change up a little bit. So what, talk, talk a little bit about this kind of a sequence because it's, it's one of the kind of more exciting bits. Yeah, know? I mean, this is definitely more in keeping with my you know earlier teenage movies, just this idea of sort of teenage abandon, sex. like, uh, and, and to me, that part of the, the script and that part of the story of the original book was really important you know, because there was that sort of... Um, there, uh, the relationship between his that character Phil that Shiloh plays and and Shay's character was really the sort of innocence of the movie. You know, it was really the kind of like the one sort of um, it was really the sort of 
uh, pure part. You know, it, and it was sad. There's a scene later on in the movie where, where um, Kat's character has another confrontation with him a few years later, and that that energy and that youth is already gone, and it's it's really sad. And I I thought it was um, really. I mean, this part to me is like so important, and of course to me, when it was one of the funnest like the dance sequence where they meet and just like these sort of energetic kind of scenes were um, very much a counterpoint to the darker sort of more serious moments in the movie. It's also very unconventional if you sort of like compare it with the the more sort of cookie cutter versions of the story that are out there. So Shailene, I, I would like to ask you a little bit about that. I mean, you've done bigger movies and you probably get all kinds of offers. So you know, taking on a project like this is it's al- it's almost like uh, you know, like uh, you're showing people th- what you're willing to do in, in ways that other people aren't willing to do. So talk a little bit about sort of, you know, when you're at that stage where there are a lot of different kinds of opportunities and directions you can go. Why why take on a project that is you know less traditional, let's say, or, or more you know obviously commercial in, in certain ways. Uh, well, the funny thing is, I did this movie before Divergent or Fault in Our Stars or even like a, an option for me. Divergent wasn't even around when, when we did this movie because we filmed it two years ago. Uh, so it's interesting that it came out now. Um, so it must look <laughs> like to the world like that's how I planned it or something. But um, I mean, as far as choosing projects, Greg is one of the best filmmakers out there. It's like you wait in line and you knock on the door and you're like, please answer. <laughs> Can I be in one of your films? Well, so, but even after Descendants, I mean, it seemed like, you know, people people had certain kinds of expectations. So uh, has your expectations for yourself evolved, let's say, in the last couple of years since you started taking on projects like this? Expectations? No. I mean, for me, acting is about the, like, the passion that you feel when you're on a film set. And there's certain people that... I admire their work, and then and then you read a screenplay that they that they create, and um, I get butterflies. And when I get butterflies, those are the projects that I chase. But I never want to work just to work. It's <laughs> a good line. And before we throw it to the audience for questions, um, Greg, Greg, in, in your situation, I mean, it's been fascinating to watch the kinds of films that you've done. I mean, it's you know, you do something like a smiley face or a kaboom, and, and you know, it really just see, it does seem like you're completely operating on the level that you want. You know, th- these like are you're just crazy. Like, you just don't know what you're doing. <laughs> only you could be doing it, and and it, 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 you have to wonder. You know, after a while, I mean, do you ever do you ever kind of have that deep seated desire to just do something really commercial, just so you can reach more people, or, or you know, kind of fit in with? I those just guys? I really want to sell out, but. Nobody wants to buy me, so. No, the idea, I've always said that, you know, I have nothing against doing a bigger uh, studio movie or, you know, uh, um, pitched ideas for TV before. I would love to work in TV. I don't have any qualms about doing anything bigger. It just has to be the right project, you know? And I have ideas for projects that are more commercial or larger and and also movies that are smaller and crazier. And I feel like every movie has its size you know I think it's a little irresponsible to make a like 30 million dollar super super artsy experimental like doom generation or something you know like every movie I feel like is has its sort of sweet spot in terms of um, like how big it should be and how accessible it should be but I do I mean I have a project I've been working on for years that's definitely more commercial it's like a genre piece but it's still very much one of my movies. It's almost like the question about the book. It's like, it really just has to make sense for me. Like, it has to be something that, as Shay said, that you're just super passionate about. I mean, I'm really proud of all the movies I've made, and I've never made a movie for money or for any career purposes or, oh, this is the right choice right now. It's really just, I love this project. I'm super passionate about it. I really believe in it. And it's what I want to do next, and you know, and I've been so fortunate in my career to be able to have continued to do that. I think a lot of us would love you to do a big studio version of Doom Generation. <laughs> I mean, it would. It's just that at a certain level, like the bigger the movie, the the thing about it, the bigger the budget, the more people it has to appeal to. You know, because I do think it's irresponsible to make a hundred million dollar Doom Generation. <laughs> you know, what I mean, because that movie's not for the mainstream. But there are ways, I think, to sort of uh, Trojan horse it a little bit and sort of sneak in these kind of subversive themes or subversive ideas within a larger sort of uh, commercial sort of framework. 
All right, so let's open this up and do some audience questions. Um, I've seen the movie, so I uh, get a real good sense of the work you've done in it, and even though it's two years older, I, I think it's interesting to see how the character goes from this sort of uh, kind of manic teen to a more self-possessed woman. I think you've made a, I don't know about this manic teen part, but I think you've definitely made an evolution into a, a very self-possessed person. Where did you see yourself like and unlike this character, and where do you see yourself, do you see yourself like she, exploring other forms of art and stuff, uh, uh, as, as the character does in the film? Uh, similarities. Um, when, I was, when I was in high school, I always liked the idea of feigning more maturity than I actually had, or uh, pretending like I had more worldly experiences than I actually had. And so in that way, we're very similar. Um, and then I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's hard to sort of say the similarities and the differences. This is a movie, though, that when I watch it, I don't see as much of myself in this character as I do maybe in other characters that I've played before. I recently talked to John Waters that he mentioned that these days, uh, independent film director who establish making like a 10 films already and who are already successful, but uh, these days it's kind of hard to make the film as an independent film director as like a studio wants more like a tent of pole of like a hundred million film or something more easier than actually uh, independent film, the budget like a 10, 50 million. Uh, would you agree on that? Or do you think uh, the same way as like a 10 or 20 years ago when you used to make the film? Is the same way or a little bit different right now, the situation? I mean, the film business and the whole film medium is changing so rapidly. You know, it's really like, I mean, as a, you know, I was part of sort of a film school generation. I went to USC film school. I studied cinema in school. We studied all the auteurs. And it's funny, I always thought that that was just the way the world was and it was always going to be that way. But I do feel like, you know, with all of this, with the, all of that, um, the way people watch movies is different, the way people make movies is different, the way movies are consumed is different, and it's just a whole new, you know, the media is changing so rapidly. So it is similar in a, in a way. It's like I'm making my movies the same way I've always made them, the way I made my first movie. I write a script, make storyboards, you know, get whoever can, I can to be in them, and you know, hopefully scrape some money together to make it. Um, the technology actually is incredible. I should cut my last four or five maybe six movies on Final Cut Pro, like literally like a student version on a desk, you know, on, a, on, a, on a Mac computer. Um, and you know, the things you can do now digitally effects wise with the camera, with digital photography, you know, you'll soon be making movies on iPhones. It's like, uh, you know, it, there's so much that's changed. I always tell people, you know, independent filmmakers ask me like for advice and stuff. And I'm friends with like, you know, a lot of the, older independent filmmakers like Rick Linkletter and Gus Van Sant and all that. And when we started making movies, it was like 16 millimeter. It was hu lugging huge equipment around and lights. And it was so physically hard to make a movie. And it's, at this point, never been easier. You know, you don't, the kids today who are 25 making their first movie have no idea how easy they have it. And it's, um, so that, you know, the technology is really changing. I think that's a good thing, um, but it is, different and it's a little bit scary because you don't know what the f future kind of holds. Um, Greg, what was one of the more challenging scenes to portray the way you had envisioned it versus the way it was coming across? And then Shailene, what was one of the more challenging roles to prepare for and really show what you wanted to show? Hmm. Uh, you want to go first? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a scene in the in the movie where uh, Ava Green, my mom, comes in and she, in the middle of the night, sort of rips. We get in a fight in the middle of the night. I don't want to uh, give anything away, but I was I was really nervous about that scene because my character is meant to go from somebody who is sleeping to somebody who is really emotionally or gets thrown in a really emotional emotionally heightened situation, and uh, that was one, something that. That was probably the hardest scene for me to do. I struggled with it. I felt like it was it was difficult. 
Well, it didn't show. <laughs> I don't. It, there wasn't any scene really that I was uh, unhappy with, or intimidated with, or struggling with. To me, every mo- every dance movie, because of the cast, you know, I was really just sort of blown away by the, this ensemble and the actors that said, like Angela Bassett, like you know, the therapist worked like a day. Angela Bassett was like, "Yeah, I'll do it." I was like, "What? Like, we're Angela Bassett's gonna be in this movie?" And it was, you know, it was so amazing to me the 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 caliber of actors I was working with. It was really just a joy every day to come to set and just see, you know, play with these people and watch them work and just like see this the scenes come to life. And so much of the work was really just, you know, this amazing uh, group of actors that we managed to get together. Thank you both for coming out tonight. I enjoy your movies, both of you. I have a question for both of you. I wanted to know, who have you not worked with that's um, on your bucket list? I know, I know Shay's bucket I know Shay's answer. <laughs> what, what is my answer? I'm not going to say. I would love to work with Mark Ruffalo, because I just think he can't, like, he, he's just such a brilliant actor. I'm just fascinated by him. Everything he does, I think, is brilliant. Um... Hmm. I don't. It, can it be just somebody dead, or can it be anybody? Uh, Maybe we should think practically because uh, they're alive. They, might, uh, they might. They might hear this and go, "Okay." Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know. I worked with so many amazing people. Uh, I'll pick somebody super random, and it's surprising. Then Chris Pratt. Um, I actually know Chris Pratt because he's married to Anna Ferris, who of course was in Smiley Face, and um, I've met Chris several times, and I just think he's awesome and funny, and he's such a cool the guy. And so um, throw that out there. Smiley, <laughs> Smiley Face could use a sequel. You know? <laughs> there you go with with Chris Pratt. <laughs> you heard it here first. I have a teenage daughter who looks up to you tremendously as an actress. Thank you very much. And. <laughs> And your films are wonderful. (laughs) My question to you is, what inspired you to become an actress as having a teenager who is aspiring in that area? I probably have the most boring answer to that question. I was five, and at five, it was like acting, gymnastics, soccer, sure, let's play, let's have fun. (laughs) Um, So I I wasn't, I didn't have, I guess, the typical route of uh, seeing a movie and feeling inspired by it or looking up to other actors and wanting to emulate their careers. It was more of just a, like a passion project that I loved. I loved the rejection as a kid, being told no at auditions and having to work harder and go to acting classes. And so I guess that was inspiring in a way. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you, everybody, thank for you. coming.